Well, hello everybody, Mr. O here, and today I'm going to give you the very basics of coloring with Prismacolor color pencils. Mr. O, you ask, why do you only show us the basics? Well, I don't feel like there's enough of those videos out there. They get very complicated very fast, and I will do more advanced levels. I want to just kind of lay out, you know, what the basics are to get you started. Um, what I'm using today is Prismacolor Premier Color Pencils. And of course this one's new and it's still in its package, but I just want you to know what a normal set looks like. Uh, you can pick them up uh, at any of your uh, neighborhood art stores. Um, now I also want to tell you that you can also use Prismacolor Scholar, which is a much cheaper brand. I do know Target sells these, and uh, they may not have the larger set, so you might have to go to your art stores for that. Um, getting to the color pencils, I made a video of information, and I will uh, tag that in the uh, description below. I suggest that if you wanna know more about Prismacolor color pencils, what's good, what's not, uh, things that you should get with it. Um, just check out that video. And so I'm going to get started. So I'm going to talk about the basics of coloring and blending. Um, so I'm going to use some tools that I haven't talked about, which is I have a solvent pen, a blending pen. Uh, as you can see, it's for wax-based pencils. Now, believe it or not, your Prismacolor Blender can also work, but the key to these things is you got to clean them. When you are done using them in color pencils, you got to clean them. If you do not, you could change the color of the blender. Now there's also liquid solvent that I use with a paintbrush. Now, what kind of paintbrush? This is basically an acrylic brush that's very soft. It's one that I can actually use with watercolor. So it's soft but firm is the type brush that I'm using. And let's see, this is a, a, a NASCO number 12. It's the NASCO brand from uh, the NASCO Art Company. And I really like them. They, they do a very good job. So does Saks and School Speciality. And um, um, so let's get to coloring. Um, outside of uh, the color pencils, you may need a nice sharpener and of course I, I am not sponsored by Prismacolor here I just think this <laughs> their sharpeners are high quality and I do enjoy their pencils very much for a wax based pencil um, so let's start coloring and the way I start and as you can see I made these pre-made circles um, I color without put, putting a lot of pressure in the beginning and if you've ever seen any of my work or any of my students work you know it eventually it gets to be high pressure and now I want to show something here I'm gonna go over this part with the darker blue and then I want to go back over with the light blue and this is actually called layering and this is like the first step of blending you need to learn how to layer. Now this is very basic layering and where I take the same color and go over and you see I went light first. Now you can reverse it, um, but you gotta be careful when you do dark first. And you notice how I'm pushing down a little bit, but I'm not pushing so hard that I'm breaking my color pencil, but it, it's a rich color you have a lot of value in that. Now, what happens if, you know, I want to do two different colors? Now, I never pronounce this word correctly, but I do have a color pencil. Um, I already thought I had one. Uh, uh, brownishing, br br brushing, I can, my, this is, this is a word that I think either my accent or my speech impediment does not allow uh, me to say I just need to work on it um, so I will eventually get the name um, it's basically a way of layering um, but using two different colors so I'm going to use the blue and the yellow 
And so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to layer the blue first. Sorry if I'm kind of going scattered brain here. I apologize to you guys. I have a, I'm very excited for the first time. I'm getting a lot of calls for videos and I keep thinking, how am I going to make them all? But I'm going to. Now I want you to notice what happens when I take the yellow. You notice that I'm starting to get a, a greenish. And this is for tinting. You, know, you want to show a little reflection off of something and you can actually tint by doing layers of contrasting colors or complementary colors. Now I'm going to go, you know, darken up my shade. Maybe go back in a little bit more with the yellow and push a little harder so I can get some. And you just, as you can see, that's another way of getting a color. Now you have to be a little careful. You can see the difference when you don't, from contrasting to complementary uh, colors that you, you go with. Um, depending on what your set is, you, can, you should experiment and have fun with it. Um, it will allow you to do a lot of different things. Now, one of the things I am going to use that I completely forgot I'm, I was going to talk about is just show you the white gel pen. I have a video with white gel pen going over markers, and um, you should really take a look at that because it works the same for color pencils. Um, I am going to show you, and this is why I'm just doing a solid color here. Now, notice I am pushing, but notice the other thing, too, is I'm coloring the same direction. Um, I'm going with the curve. Even if I go straight here, I'm curving it as I go to this edge of the circle. So when you color, if I cross, you're going to get that scratchy area. I always warn, like my students will do posters that are 19 by 24. If they leave a large area, you know how hard it is to keep that uh, color, just a single color straight that whole time. It's very, very hard. And so I do not recommend it. So let me uh, do one more circle here. And I'm gonna just do the yellow. And you have probably noticed this is much different than Crayola. Crayola are wax-based color pencils also, but it's the quality um, Prismacolor are professional grade. Now, are there color pencils that other people recommend like Fiber Castle? Yes. Now, a lot of those are oil-based color pencils. Are there some quality uh, wax brands out there that are just as good as Prismacolor? Yes. I just haven't invested into um, uh, taking a look at them and comparing them. Um, that's a little bit more of an expense, uh, as like the marker video that I made. Um, I had a lot of that stuff already. So let's just talk a little bit about the white gel pen and the white color pencil. Now, I want you to see this. The white color pencil kind of shows up, but if I do this, I hope you can see this on the... I'm lightening the brown up. So if I need to lighten something up, like just do uh, some light reflect, I can use my white color pencil over. And just like I did over here, you can use the white. Believe it or not, white and black Prismacolors, it's good to have more than one um, uh, pencil. And then the white gel pen, what's nice is when you do have to make details, this is just a little cheat. Now, do the other Sakura gel pens work over color? Absolutely. Um, I did red hair and I used the orange and red within my red and orange color pencil and it looked fantastic. Okay. Now I'm going to use the solvent and the blender and I'm going to just use the blender right here. Um, let's see, I'll do the uh, color pencil blender first. Let's just get over here. I want you to take a look at this. And you see how the color pencil actually smooths. 
but I'm creating a third color that wasn't there before because as it goes with the light blue, it's making it like a medium in between. So it just smooths out. And you see the white that I left behind because of the grid of the paper. By the way, this is just basic uh, 80 pound weight drawing paper. I will talk about, uh, I, I realize a lot of students don't understand the difference of the quality of paper. They think watercolor paper is watercolor paper, uh, drawing paper is drawing paper. Now you see how smooth that became? Now let's just see what happens when I take the li liquid solvent blender and I wanna make sure that's clean. I tested it to make sure it's still wet because like anything, um, things can uh, dry out. And like I said, you can use your Prismacolor alcohol base marker. Now notice, take a good look. See how much darker everything got when I blended it together? Now, when I take this and I do a solid color, let's just take it over here with the white and the brown. It's not much different. It's just blending that white into that brown much better. Now, because this is liquid, just like anything you would paint, you're going to get feathering. You, things are going to leak out. So you, one, you got to let things dry in between. Two, you got to account that if you puddle a spot, it might blur a little bit. So allow yourself a little freedom with that. Don't be afraid if that happens. Now I'm going to get the solvent out. I'm at a drafting table, so things like to slide down. And I'm using the Gamblin solvent. I bought it from Jerry's Artarama. And you guys probably get a kick that I have, like every company I have bought something from. Like I said, I am a sale shopper. I don't mind buying uh, from different places. They all t treat me very well. And now I'm gonna go with the solvent. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend the red. Now notice, look at what, what's happening. Look how smooth that is. Now, if you're in school and you're doing a, let's say the Lions Club Peace poster, this you almost have to count a long time to do. So I don't recommend it unless you have the time and the commitment. And if you're wondering when I'm uh, when I go off screen, I got a, um, a napkin here, a tissue here that I just kind of wipe. Now, when I get to the yellow, I want to be very careful because I just don't want the red to just blend. And as I said, um, if you leave it wet, you got to give it time to dry. Now notice how that changed. Okay. So these, this is the basics of using color pencil. Um, you know, having blenders, having solvents is great. When you look at uh, these amazing uh, Prismacolor color pencil stuff and you're like, you've been working and you cannot you know, make the effects that these people are making. Well, they're using solvents and they're using different kinds of blenders and techniques. I hope this these basic techniques get you started on what you want to get started with. And most importantly, let me grab a color. And this is the time of year people forget that they're beautiful. I always have to make sure I spell that correctly. And guys, it was great as always. We'll see you next video. Bye-bye.